What up guys, David here again with PhD TV and another episode in the greenhouses. So today I wanted to talk about some common issues you run into, especially outdoors this time of year. We're getting into what's outdoor season. If you haven't planted, definitely get those in quick. It is the perfect time of year here in Oklahoma. So it's the start of June. We've got all these veg plants here. Some have been topped, some have not. You can see some nice aggressive cuts. Now, what we're looking at is we're looking at pest issues and uh, we're gonna look at some mold issues. So this is super common. I'm standing here, it's 94 degrees outside. It's about 110 in here. Poor camera guy here is sweating his ass off. Uh, we've got the plants feeling lovely and happy though. So with this, we're gonna look at a few problems going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop off this leaf. It's yellowing a little bit anyhow. So if we get right up on this. This is the most common plague in cannabis gardens. Now this is the spider mite. So if you look on this other side here, you'll see the little dots. Now those little dots there are the adult spider mites, the little white dots or the immature or adolescent ones, both of which are causing problems here. And we know that they're there because we've got the white dots on top of the leaf. Now, the problem we have here in this time of year, it's 100 degrees, these things breed so fast. So they can reproduce, I'm not even gonna, don't quote me on this, but they can double their, their birthing rate in a matter of a few days when this type of temperature. So spraying, keeping them down is really, really difficult to do. One of the things that's gonna be very important is pruning consistently, getting a good airflow, uh, and not having your plants too bunched together. Spider mites, while they will certainly web up and fly between plants on wind currents and so forth, they tend to provide, they prefer to be rubbed right up next to another plant. Uh, here I am waving this around, just spreading the mites everywhere. Uh, don't do that. So just another point, like that's what they want. They want to have ease of access to fall onto another leaf to be brushed up on there and that's how they spread. Now, just as we've treated in the past, something I mentioned before, Evergreen 60-6. Uh, there's a lot of other pyrethrins. You can always go and veg here. You can go the Azimax direction. I would say be very careful with anything that's any type of oil base, even if that's a garlic or rosemary oil. Reason being, it's super sunny. It's already super hot. Uh, the leaves and the coating on there, if you give it an oily substance, it's gonna act as a magnifying glass, it's gonna burn those leaves. Um, now, another problem, the same plant here, it's just getting its ass whipped. So this one here has a few little dot holes in the top. Sometimes this would be uh, representative of a caterpillar, more times than not, they prefer the budding plants. This here is actually from grasshoppers. So grasshoppers are almost impossible to keep out of your garden. The best way is physical deterrence. Uh, spraying for them, there's not really any natural beneficial uh, ways to go about that. Uh, obviously kill them when you get the opportunity. Uh, there are a few things like nolo bait that are allowed in certain states. Uh, in general, physical deterrence and keeping your uh, a clear space around your garden if you're outdoors, having it cleared, brush, walk, you know, uh, brush hogged and mowed down low. Uh, we don't want to have standing grass and too much going on. So you can see I'm drenched here. Uh, these guys have been out here busting ass in these greenhouses all day and I've only been out here fucking five minutes. So. It's not easy work. Don't get caught up in the glamour of weed, but the profits come through. Now let's go look at some weed. All right guys, so this is Mandarin Cookies. This is a newer strain to us. This one here is at about, I think it's about five weeks in, maybe the end of week five. Uh, now as you notice, there's a couple light little brown spots that are popping up on a few of these. Now structurally, really happy. We've got nice tight internodal spacing. You can see that across the board. Uh, really nice, it's gonna produce some really nice colas. However, it is 90 plus degrees outside, it's 100 plus degrees in here. We're not getting great uh, wind. It's humid, humid, humid. It has been for the past few weeks. We keep getting all of this rain. So it's really difficult to keep the mold out. And I'm actually shocked at how dense a lot of these nugs are. Uh, super frosty, the quality's there. But I can guarantee we will be harvesting these about a week from now. We're gonna start fan leafing and getting them down because mold starts to take over. Now, as much as this hurts our yield, there's not really much we can do. We've been preventatively spraying with hydrogen peroxide. Now that's going to sanitize and kill the active spores. Of course, in this environment, they just pop right back up. A little bit of wind just brings it right in. Uh, you can tell how hard I'm sweating. As you know, these plants are also hot. We don't have fans. Uh, this is kind of just the circumstance of climate. It's like growing outdoors with a little bit of extra coverage. Uh, so we can extend the seasons. However, we're still right in the middle of them just like anybody else. Um, now with the mold, after you try to spray with hydrogen peroxide, we also treat with potassium bicarbonate. Now, potassium bicarbonate is gonna raise the surface level of the pH on the leaves. It's gonna to help to defend uh, against any uh, mold reinfestations. In this scenario, it's not as beneficial because the bud is so resinous, it's later in flower. 
Um, and so it's kind of hydrophobic is in itself and then the water just runs off. So anything we spray it with, uh, even if we fog, even if we're using a uh, surfactant, it doesn't penetrate, it doesn't cover as well, and it certainly doesn't protect as well in this environment. Now indoors, if we had this pop up, knock it out, no problem. You got a little airflow, just increase, move the fans around, spray them down, good to go. In this environment, we're just uh, more so managing whatever we can do, and we're gonna get the best we can. Let's get the fuck out of here. Get some big nugs. When pheno hunting for strains outdoors, there's things that do better and things that don't do as well. So, uniquely enough, this is Blue Rat Sickle, uh, BRZ on the tag. Uh, this is one that we ran last year and didn't ever really get to see in full production. So the difficulty of large scale is to get your numbers up in time. It can be kind of hard to meet your seasons and meet the needs of how many numbers you got. So Blue Raz is first time getting a first run through. Honestly, very impressed. Nice, tight internodal stacking. Not really seeing any pest issues, a little bit of mite damage here and there, but by and large, uh, really tight, really resinous, really beautiful. Still shooting nice new pistols. Um, also not seeing any mold. Contrary to that, we have a small little batch here. You see these little short guys. This is Candy Kush. This is one that we inherited last year. We had gotten some free plants cloned up, got into production because it did well inside. Outside, as you can see here, already getting bad mold, uh, just taking off, eating off these tops. It's just right up in there. So again, these have been treated with hydrogen peroxide as soon as, as recent as yesterday and uh, still present. It's just because the humidity is so high if the hydrogen peroxide doesn't have the opportunity to kill the mold and then die off, uh, these, it stays moist, it stays very uh, spongy, and it just continues to spread. It doesn't really get its chance to do the job. You can see here, this died off a little better. It's a little crunchier. Get that out of there like that. So you can see here, it's a little crunchier. That's from hydrogen peroxide having killed it. So we're doing everything we can there. Just one of those side effects. Pick the right strains when you're going outside. Uh, we didn't expect to be this humid this time of year already. Typically it's more of a July, August thing. Here we are in the start of June when it's supposed to be beautiful and it's, it's a little icky, but part of the game. All right, so this is another uh, newbie here. This is Apricot Gelato from Ethos Genetics. Beautiful strain, really happy, obviously very tall. Uh, seems to be more sativa dominant in its structure. I was a bit nervous, honestly, here about a week ago when everything else was getting the nice tight structure, it's getting thick. It looked like nothing. Tiny nugs, and here we are, they're getting thick. We're getting this more sativa structured cola. It's getting nice and big. And honestly, as you can see, there's not a touch of mold on this stuff. So being more sativa dominant, clearly being a more tropical strain and the way it's grown, it's stretched out. I think we might really be able to push this guy, hopefully to its end. Uh, that would be amazing, because the timing is everything. You gotta harvest when it's ready, and if we can have some things hold out longer than others and still give us the quality product or better, that's what we're aiming for. Great example of the different phenos we've got going on here. This is Butterface. So it's a hybrid, it seems to be doing quite a few different things. I've never grown this one before. Uh, tall, lanky, thin node structure, however, super, super resinous, much like cookie strains. Um, I'm excited to see how it yields out. First, I was not thinking it's gonna be very promising. Uh, it's starting to stack up a lot better than I anticipated, so gassiness is always good. All right, a great example of when it's gone too long. So these guys here, like I said, about five and a half weeks into flower, really stacking up. This is the purple tangy, so it's actually approaching its finishing time. Uh, now, as you see behind, we've got a lot of laying over branches, we've got a lot of bending stuff. What's happened here is we've got only so many hands and we've been harvesting because the mold is hitting us hard on some of our later flowering plants. So as we're whacking that out, getting it ready for processing, some of the labor here has gotten a little bit neglected. Uh, major key, make sure you get this done before they get to the stage and flower. When they're sticky, they're a lot more brittle, they're harder to move. I uh, definitely want to get the, it, it, the latest, you want to get it done in about four weeks in. So, this here a little bit late, we're still gonna have to get some trellising on, otherwise we're gonna start losing weed.